All right, good morning. Uh, I'm going to briefly cover a little bit more about the Trivium. And this is going out to everybody here on this channel, whether you're ex Jehovah's Witness or someone that's into the mental models, accelerated learning, photo reading, Charlie Munger crowd, whoever, whoever you might be. Trivium helps you to basically correct your thinking and to have a, a checks and balances going on uh, to determine truth. And isn't that really what it's about, people? Uh, especially if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you might uh, remember how Jehovah's Witnesses say, refer to themselves as being in the truth, as having the only truth, God's only truth on earth. Uh, for the mental model folks and the trivium folks, photo reading, this is about uh, making sure that what you're taking in and learning is well worth learning. You don't want to take in garbage, right? And that's basically what GIGO or GIGO stands for over here. Garbage in, garbage out, right? So in today's day and age, we have the Internet, we have Google. So every single day, you're going to pick up new pieces of data and information all the time, whether you're conscious of it or not. And you want to make sure that you're filtering out the things that are not necessary, but you're holding on to the things that are necessary. And that basically boils down to discovering and arranging knowledge, right? It's taking in knowledge and arranging it in your head in such a way, whether you consciously do it or unconsciously, to where it makes sense to something that you already know, so that you then know what to do or what we would call output, whether it is in the form of rhetoric or taking an action of sorts. So the trivium, as you can see, is based on the principle of three. And in another video, we talked about the uh, basic core mental models, the universal principles, and we covered. Uh, I covered this book here, A Beginner's Guide to Constructing the Universe, The Mathematical Archetypes of Nature, Art, and Science, A Voyage from 1 to 10 by Michael Schneider. This is an ex excellent book to uh, get for the uh, mental models because it will tell you a lot about the number 3, the archetypal symbolic meaning of 3. And principle. And as you can see, the trivium is a clear archetype there. You have the word T R I, the prefix tri. And here, as you can see, physically and visual, I mean, not physically, but visually, this is expressed in the form of a triangle. Or I have a sketched here, a, a, a pyramid. Okay? So you have three basic bodies, distinct bodies of knowledge or disciplines. You have grammar, logic, and rhetoric. But it's not just a body of knowledge. It is also an idea. It is also a principle. The principle of threeness. Okay, so don't don't think this is just a, a body of knowledge and that's it. No, this is a lot bigger than that. This is also a big idea. And this is something that you might choose to chew on for a lifetime, lifelong learning, because it's just that big. But it's a lot of fun because you can begin to implement this immediately on an unconscious level before you consciously can explain any of this. Just by taking small nibbles and bites like this, watching YouTube videos, and actually getting the book like I just had getting a copy of it. it. I've had this book for some years and I've read it and I've read it and there's so many things I'm still not really understanding consciously. But I am aware that I have been a lot better in my speaking, in my writing, and also in communicating and understanding other people better and just my, my quality of life has gotten a lot uh, easier and a lot better in my experience, in all areas, because communication governs everything in life, whether it's writing an email, you're on Facebook every day, you're reading, you're taking in and processing, you're making sense of things, you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter, 
you're at home with your family, you're speaking, communicating, all of this involves this principle here, okay? And then it is also a set of tools. These aren't just subjects that you learn to regurgitate on a test. This is not how this rolls. This is a set of tools as well. And they help you to arrange your knowledge in such a way where you can determine objective, verifiable truth. Okay? And that's the whole name of the game, right? And this is with anything. If you're reading a law journal, if you're reading a math book, if you're reading a history book, this applies to anything, even if you're on Facebook. Before you post your next status on Twitter or on LinkedIn or on Facebook, you'll have the trivium there to help you at least, and in the least case, to help you not make a fool of yourself. <laughs> I know it's a tall order for me, but um, you know some of us are better at it than others. But anyway, here we have another part here. I went to Jan Irvin's site. You might know of him. He has some interesting things there. I know that there's some people that have various ways to apply this. But uh, there's a lot to chew on. But as you can see, this is a mind map, by the way. Okay. And these are also good because you can kind of mix the, uh, the writing with a visual sense of how to order and categorize your information on the trivia. And so this helps me to get it a little easier. I usually try to color them in because for some reason I'm responsive to color. It doesn't matter what color. Sometimes I color code it, but it doesn't really matter as long as there's color. But I didn't get a chance to do that this morning on this one here. All right. So there's basically Jehovah's Witnesses, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, any kind of cult people that have exited cults or in cults. They don't really like for you to know a lot of logic. Okay, they'll demonize it, they'll call it all kinds of terms like worldly knowledge, and we're going to be as worldly as possible. We're going to be so freaking worldly right now, okay? <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses uh, call outsiders worldly, and they call people who they want to demonize or who they don't trust within the, their uh, Jehovah's Witness church. They call them worldly too. So for all the mental model and Charlie Munger folks watching yeah it's amusing right because you would think that being called worldly is is a good thing right because it means you're wise but uh, they don't like worldly wisdom and along with that jehovah's witnesses really don't care for logic much all right but basically if you haven't heard much about it it doesn't have to, you know, even though you might not be very familiar with it and it might seem a little intimidating, you don't have to be intimidated by it. This doesn't have to be very hard, okay? We're going to break it down into small chunks right here that have big effects, all right? It's basically about errors in reasoning, and we all make these mistakes. They're called cognitive distortions in... in, in um psychology and psychotherapy and there's even a type of therapy called CBT or cognitive behavior therapy that deals with some logical fallacies common types of logical fallacies that people that suffer from different types of mental illness like depression and borderline personality can use to help heal themselves to help get themselves better yeah and uh, by the way, cognitive behavior therapy has been proven to be just as effective, if not better, for a lot of people taking medications. I'm not saying I'm not giving any kind of medical advice, all right? Uh, you need to go to a doctor for that. But what I am sharing is, is that there are quite a few people that have been able to not use any kind of chemicals anymore for their depression and anxiety and have been able to use cognitive behavior therapy which has its roots in logic all right so there's that now going over here to logical fallacies you've got the common types that you'll see in the book of uh, trivium and there's two types you've got formal and informal basically the formal one is all about the structure of the information how it's combined 
the informal takes into account the non-logical content, which is what reality is about. There are things that are not logical, like emotions, for example, and we all have emotions. We also have an imagination, which is definitely not always logical, right? And these things need to be taken into account for. Again, we're talking about a middle pillar. We're not discounting any part of the mind or reality, okay? We're taking into account logic, emotion, imagination, external and internal. And we're taking a middle path, a centered, balanced perspective. You see that? And how, how is that accomplished? Well, that's what this is all about. This is what it's going to help you to do. And you're going to be able to do this whether you're reading a scientific journal and not be swayed automatically by reason respecting. The word because gets a lot of people to agree to things that they ordinarily wouldn't. Just because the word because follows the next, <laughs> next three words, the next sentence, right? So you're also not going to be swayed uh, automatically by authority. The tendency to believe first and doubt later because it's someone in a lab, to lab coat that has pre presented the information to you. You see, so these things here can help you to have a middle pillar, a middle path. And out of the two types of logical fallacies, you also have various categories and the three major categories that you're going to be dealing with when you're looking at fallacies is relevance, presumption, and ambiguity. And we'll get into that in another video a little bit. But going further here, the first formation of logical fallacies you can look up Sir Thomas Aquinas. I hope I'm saying that right or Aquinas. Somebody can correct me. Thank you. I'm a beginner as you can see. And I know this doesn't look like it's a beginner, but I, I call myself a beginner. I've been trying to work with the Trivium for some years, and it's taken me... I still don't get, get a lot of it. That's why I've done these mind maps here. And as you can see, I've done some coloring here. And this is just intuitive coloring. I just color a little bit here and there. I, I don't really have time to color the whole thing, you know. But uh, this is uh, from a video, YouTube video that I did, and I jotted down a couple of notes here. Once again, grammar is about the smaller particulars of information, combining sounds, letters, and words together. Logic is the section that deals with concepts and larger universals, and it helps you to process, verify the information make sure there aren't contradictions, and to experience truth through the consistency. And basically, that's what the function and nature of language is all about. We have a system of symbols that we use to express consciousness. And consciousness has thought, consciousness has emotion, a will, right? We all have a will, we all have actions. These are different expressions of beingness. Therefore, you have ten states of being, which you can count on both hands within the trivium. And that's your basic starting reference, is the ten states of being within the trivium. And this, here, let's see if we can uh, turn to it. All right, we have here on page 24 in the trivium. And as you can see, I've done some, some notes there, some correspondences from the Kabbalistic Tree of Life which is also 10 categories or 10 sephirot. But this is your starting point, the 10 categories of being. And this, when you really chew on this for some time, you start to understand and realize that you as a person has changed because of this information when you really start thinking and reflecting on it. And I can't really tell you to do this any other way, but... It just takes your own time. You have to give yourself enough time to go back to this and ask yourself, well, what about substance? Okay, the sentence it says is that which exists in itself. For example, man. Quantity, a, a determination of the matter of substance, giving it parts distinct from parts. For example, tall. What does all of this mean? 
And there are levels and levels and layers and layers of meaning that you have to do yourself, both consciously and unconsciously, that just take time. It just takes a certain amount of time. And it is for you to go back and chew on that. But once you've got some time and some chewing under your, your belt there, you're going to have a deeper, more implicit understanding and because you've already photo read this book, this is for the photo readers. And if you don't know what photo reading is, it's not quite like speed reading. Uh, you can check out the other videos, but also go to photoreading.com. It's by Paul Sheely. If you want to check it out at the library, you can learn how to basically take pictures of books, of the insides of books. And um, with the use of mind maps like this, you can um, have up to 75 percent or more comprehension rate but it's not just about being able to regurgitate the right answers on a test this is about actually living this implementing it and not implementing it where you have to think about it it comes natural like breathing to you it's in your bones that's what we're talking about here and this is going to take some time we each have to do our own thinking i cannot tell you a way to shortcut your thinking and that's the thing with ex Jehovah's Witnesses there's a tendency to be lazy in the thinking department and you cannot afford to do that in this day and age okay you just can't but with having said that with the 10 states of being this is a good book to syntopic photo read once again photo reading is not speed reading although Photo reading goes very well with speed reading. I think the two could go very well hand in hand, and I've used them. But this book here, I've gone through more than a couple of times, as you can see here. I've, I really love this book. This is a book that, yes, you can photo read it, and yes, you can speed read it, but this is a book you'll want to revisit over and over and over because the ideas are just huge. They're bigger than life when you really start understanding the sacredness of the principles of numbers yes numbers these are the basic mental models that are universal numbers are universal you know they're way out in space when you do calculations for the the rocket to hit the moon they have to be precise. Those numbers cannot be shady. They have to be precise because you're dealing with a very, very long distance, astronomical distances. So numbers are universal. And this, these are your basic principles of the mental models, 1 through 10. Let's check out what number 3 is all about. All right, 3 is all about three-part harmony. Now, how does that fit in with what we looked at with the trivium? Remember the triangle? You had the polar opposites on the bottom end, right? And then you had the middle path, the middle pillar. A, a higher, broader perspective. This perspective here is elevated, you see? And this is excellent for conflict resolution. You can create these diagrams for all kinds of issues and problems. They're also the basic of a system. Remember you have an input and an output and then you have a processing. So that image in of itself is a favorite that is used by all kinds of corporations and businesses. Let's see, there is also in nature you can see how the principle of the triune or the trinity or the trivium is formed in flies and green peppers, all kinds of vegetables and fruits, butterflies, flowers. And the triangle is a, a series of never ending triangles within itself. Perfect symmetry. This triangle is a perfect, all sides are equilateral. Balance. 
you can see the principle of the triad in the symbol for justice. Aha! Yeah, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? This is why scales symbolize the justice by trial. T-R-I. Look at that. The prayer of 120 degrees, when you fold your palms together like that, forms a trinity. And then this is for all the Illuminati conspiracy buffs. Look at that. Yeah, there's another tri triangle, right? But check this out. Saints have halos of different shapes, but only God's halo is traditionally a triangle. Isn't that something? This is how deeply psychologically we perceive the principle of three. Now here's a favorite. Long before Einstein phrased E equals MC squared, ancient geometers represented the trinity of light, energy, and mass by their three tools. The compass with its unsleeping eye or sun above and its legs as rays of wisdom and beauty shining into our lives. The straight edge that directs the energy patterns of tension and movement and the pencil and paper that make the patterns visible. There's, here's some more here. Look at this one. The Egyptians, they were on to something. This is pretty interesting. Now, how can they be this precise in their symmetry? You know, this is not how history portrays a lot of different cultures of the ancient past. And look at this. They were highly intelligent people. A lot of this stuff we can't even replicate today with all of the stuff that we know. All right, here's a little snippet. The divine geometer constructs the cosmos and by which the symbolic geometer approximates archetypal patterns are also mirrored in us. What scientists call light, energy, and mass are the traditional spirit, soul, and body described by Plutarch as nous, divine intellect, psyche or soul and soma body to the hindus the principles within light energy and mass are the three gunas or qualities of purity activity and inertia that blend in different proportions in all processes and events outside and within us so here you go you have the basic principle of three of triangles And this is the big idea behind the trivium. Once again, the trivium is a huge, huge idea. We'll call it three. The number three. It is also a set of tools. And you have grammar, logic, and rhetoric. And they are distinct. They are very different but they are interrelated. And when you use them as a whole integrated unit, you can ascertain objective, objective and verifiable truth in any given situation. Whether it is communicating with your family, your boss, your coworker, whether you're deciding to buy that new television, do you want to spend that amount of money? Whether you're deciding to take on that new job, whatever it is, when you're researching, when you're reading, when you're communicating on Facebook, when you're doing your activism, when you're learning things, you want to make sure that you have the right kind of information that you need, not just the information you need, because there's a lot of quality information, but it may not be relevant to you, you see, and that's where the topic of relevancy comes in, within logic. So you have a whole system of arranging and discovering knowledge, and more importantly, truth. All right, 
Thanks for watching, and don't forget, get these books here if you don't already have them. Learn how to photo read. It's not a lot of books. I know that I have a zillion books here that I keep showing people over and over, but it's really not a lot if you know how to photo read. If you know how to photo read, and you know anybody can learn it in about half an hour, you can um, you can go through about you know easy at least ten books a, a week, you know, um, if not more. It, it's not really that difficult. But anyway, especially if it's on a topic that you love and know something about already, it's not going to be very hard. And you're going to have the time of your life doing it. All right. Thanks for watching. See you later.